This bike was called the most advanced bike in the world. And you know what? I think that is an absolutely fair assessment. It led the way on a number of different fronts, broke new ground, principally data collection. Uh, <clears throat> you might notice that the cranks aren't exactly level. Uh, they were actually set up like that so that it could be attached to its display stand and I hadn't noticed when I pinched it for our video. So uh, apologies for that. Let's firstly address this Aston Martin badge, shall we? Because it's actually based on a Factor One bike. But when Aston Martin launched the 177 car, a collaboration between the two brands came about, meaning that if you were lucky enough and that's the understatement of the day, to get your hands on an Aston Martin 177, then you were also given the opportunity of buying a matching bike for the princely sum of £25,000. Now, let's not get distracted by this price tag, shall we? Because for a start, it's kind of justifiable when you realise that it took seven people, supposedly two weeks, to make each bike. And then when you consider that the levels of tech on here are absolutely unparalleled, does start to make sense. It was created by Beru F1 Systems, which is a company that works exclusively in motorsport, except when they make bikes, for the amusement, apparently, of their engineers. So what about that data then? Let's start with the power meter, shall we? It measures left and right legs independently, something we perhaps take for granted now, but was done way before anyone else. And it's done to an accuracy of 0.1%, which is absolutely bonkers. Not only that, but you also don't need to calibrate it for every ride. Again, something that's not even particularly commonplace now. Then, in addition to that power meter, we've also got insanely accurate speed data. Now, I'll admit, this is not something that I ever really considered before, but when you've got eight magnets embedded in this custom wheel, it can detect tiny fluctuations in the speed of the bike, even per pedal stroke. So it gives you a whole new look on your pedaling efficiency. Basically, it gives you so much data because it could also record cornering forces and lean angle as well that a normal hedge unit could not cope. Hence, this custom one up here. Basically, a Garmin memory would fill up after about a kilometre of riding. Now, we're filming this at the new Factor headquarters. But the reason why they've got not just one, but two pieces of this cycling history is because actually it forms a really important part of the history of the brand. There is a lot of DNA shared between this bike and the current generation. Now, not in terms of data collection, but actually in terms of frame design. So you can see that really striking dual down tube there. And also in terms of the material as well. So this bike is made out of M55J carbon fiber supplied by Nippon Graphite. And it is apparently the stiffest unidirectional material on the market. And it's the same stuff that can also be found in the current crop of factor bikes. But what is absolutely different about this bike is the way it's made, because it's done in a way that could not be mass produced. It's done using what's called autoclave technology, so where the frame is put in a pressurized vessel, and it means that it can be made in just one piece. Now, most carbon fiber frames are made in lots of different pieces and then bonded together. The current factors are made in a very impressive two pieces, but this, as I said, is literally just one piece. Let's geek out on a little bit of the component tree, shall we? Now, although this bike isn't actually all that old, the original Factor One did have hydraulic discs before that was really a thing on road bikes. They were fully custom, including their own custom shifters and flat mount calipers before flat mount was even a twinkle in the eye of a Shimano engineer. This one, as you'll see, uses Shimano Durace DI2 levers, so cable actuated through to the hydraulic master cylinders, which are neatly integrated under this head unit here. Now, elsewhere, you'll see there is Shimano DI2 all over it. It's pretty hard to escape the big component manufacturers, but this one does have a custom battery made out of carbon fiber with its own unique method of attachment to the bike and its own connector as well custom connector. Of course you need one. Now all this tech does come at a cost, both in monetary terms and also in weight. This one is a pretty hefty 9.1 kilograms apparently, not a million miles away from some of the current crop of aerodynamic disc equipped bikes, but still quite a lot heavier than most 
of its descendants here at Factor. Now, do make sure though that despite that, you give it a big thumbs up because it is a pretty important bit of bike tech. Do also make sure that you subscribe to GCN before leaving this video. To do so, just click on the globe. And if you want to watch a couple more videos, you can check out mine and Matt's factors that we raced at the Taiwan KOM Challenge just down there. And to see how we got on, click just down there. I'd love to tell you how, but I don't know yet because I haven't done it. I got that to look forward to.